Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech, but today we're taking a look at the TP-Link AC2600 Archer A10. So this unit boasts great service. I'm not saying anything about mesh, but for the most part, mesh is generally when it comes to AX stuff. So we got good performance claims on here. Let's tear her open and see if they're true. All right, first off, it's nice and recyclable packaging. I really appreciate that. As we get into it, we have the quick installation guide. There is no, oh wait, there is a card. There is a card, I stand corrected. And uh, got power supply and then the main unit, of course. Let's take a look at it. It looks as if it is shipped with its antennas on it. That's right, meaning these are not removable antennas. You can't remove those. I'm always a little bit afraid of taking this stuff off because as soon as I, oh, it feels so nice. As soon as I do that, once I get a fingerprint on there, man, that stuff's never going to come off. And uh, it can always be a little bit interesting to try and get this stuff off of here. I think I'm actually just going to leave it on there. Oh, wait, there we go. Nice and easy. Clean and easy and under control, right? Anyways. Very nice, very nice. It's not trying to be futuristic looking, not trying to be different, but at the same time manages to be different than anything that I've seen recently. Power, power, we got um, LAN-ish places and that's where you plug in your modem. Okay, so let's get this thing turned on and see how she does. All right, so this unit is already setting itself up. Let's take a look at exactly where it puts itself within the Wi-Fi stream. Oh, wow. Okay, so this TP-Link router is definitely out for itself. So once again, you see these arcs going on. This is the Wi-Fi spectrum, and these are the channels. This TP-Link unit has put itself between 1 and 9, which is, is different. It's different. I don't know why it chose to put itself there. Maybe I'll check again once everything's all set up and done. But this is the place it decided to put itself. Uh, once again, you don't want to get into other arcs. You want to be with another arc. If anything, let's check out the 5 gigahertz. And uh, yeah, it looks like in the 5 gigahertz, we are okay. We're sharing a channel. We are within an arc form. So we're good with that. We're good with that. So this is the speed test that I get. Once again, my network is being way overdone by my local Wi-Fi. The local Wi-Fi can push so much harder, so much better than my internet provider can provide me with the internet. So if I bust this down, right now I'm in 5G, but if I move down to 2G, this will become 80 megabits per second. Still, that's, it's, good for, it's good for some stuff. Of course, you got a lot of things within your home like wireless security cameras and probably even your Roku that will only operate on the, the 2G. Next up, let's test out local transfer speed over Wi-Fi. We take the test video file. This is from a server that's just to my left. I can It's so, so close I can touch it. And the, the server on my, uh, the workhorse on my right is once again close enough I can touch it. About 15 meters away, I have this router. It's all line of sight. It all has line of sight to each other. Let's see how quickly I can download this directly to the C drive. Yes. And this is freaking awesome. I'm almost getting, I'm going to wait a sec. I wonder if I can get back up to 30 megabytes. If I can get to 30 megabytes, yeah, I did it. That this is the same speed that I can get with any of my AX routers. AX routers, I can only get them to go up to that speed exactly. I don't know. There's something about that being a glass ceiling, but I, uh, mm, I think it should be a lot faster than that because of what AX claims that it can send out. This isn't even, like, I'm happy with this when it comes to an AC unit or a Wi-Fi 5. So this is a Wi-Fi 5 unit. But if I get a Wi-Fi 6 unit and I have a Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi AX card in my computer and everything's AX, then I should be able to transfer significantly faster than that. So ultimately what I'm saying is I like this. This, is, uh, this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. At these speeds, streaming is super easy. So yeah, I can just watch my movies directly off my server with this router. 
As far as video game test goes, I have no problems with it. I haven't had any lags, haven't had any issues, but let's get into the networking section and we can look and see what the Xbox thinks of this new router. Alright, so before we've done any port forwarding, we can see that we have a strict double NAT type. Let's do some tests. We'll test the, the network connection. Console connection is good. Um, let's test speed and statistics. 80 download, 8 up. That'll do as far as Xbox needs. With the strict NAT type, though, that might give us some issues uh, in getting groups and being with groups and in parties. So let's check out the port forwarding and see if we can't change this. Okay, so next up, let's test the range. So right now, this TP-Link is in the basement far corner, far back corner of my 1,500 square foot townhouse. So I'm going to go upstairs and be at the opposite end of the house, and then uh, we will see what the signal does. Okay, so that dropped off a little bit quicker than I was thinking it would, but it can still work. So I'm now standing upstairs in the opposite corner on the second floor of my house, and the Wi-Fi has dropped out completely. What this tells me is that, once again, we need to put our access point in the middle of the building. And if we have a giant building, then what we need to do is get a mesh network. Now is time to get the mesh network. Out of all the routers that I have reviewed, this is about the same level that I get. I get some that are a little bit more powerful, but once again, it's definitely time to start looking into investing into the mesh network, if you have a bigger house. So here we see TP-Link Tether. That's the app that you're going to need if you want to control your unit from your smartphone. So here it is, it takes a minute to, uh, gotta make sure that your cell phone is on the same network as this, and it'll automatically detect it, it'll load into it, and then you have to use the password that you gave it before, and then after that you'll be able to log into it, and you can do all kinds of fun things from here. So over here you can see that we have three clients on board, there's my uh, powerful Lenovo system, there's my Alexandrian backup, Bind TP-Link ID. So from here, you can set up your guest network. You can check out your clients. You can check out your tools. Uh, for the most part, most of the things that you can do on your router's gateway will also do things here like quality of services, um, LED control. You can just turn the LED of the front of your unit on and off. Some people really like that. Um, network diagnostics. Great, your network is online. I would hope so. Yeah, yeah, so definitely good stuff. You can do a lot more with these apps than you used to be able to. Um, parental controls, being able to control parental controls from here is definitely an advantageous thing. So you'll notice pretty quickly that there's no USB at the back of this. And if you're going to hook this thing into the internet, make sure that you turn off your main router before you plug it into the internet. And then turn it on, and then go to your main modem. Sorry, this is the router. The modem's upstairs. Unplug your modem, and th then plug this in, turn it on, then go plug your modem back in. Okay, now, this part is for setup purposes. I have the unit plugged in. Immediately, it's going to tell me that there is an IP conflict, which means my modem had the same IP number as this router. So, the router is going to change its own IP number. Now, here we put in our passwords. Of course, it's always good for the routers to make you suggest your own password so that there isn't a default password. The bad part about default passwords is when hackers break into your stuff, they can automatically get further into everything if nobody changes their passwords. And let's face it, we all have enough passwords to remember, right? So we put in our time zone. Now here we'll auto detect what kind of network connection we have. So I'm just going to hit next. And I'll say even though we're setting this up just like this, uh, my internet has already kicked in as my YouTube videos have started to play. I have never actually had to use this, so let's just hit next. Now here we have the names and the passwords. The passwords are on the card, so let's just roll with standard. Let's keep standard going. We will save our settings. Oh yeah, we also have an app. They generally prefer if you set these up with the apps. 
All right, lastly, let's take a look at the user interface. Now, in order to get here, we just have to type in tplinkwifi.net. And as long as we're connected, it'll take us here. Shows us how many we have connected, wired, wireless, and on what band. And go on over to internet. Let's check out the advanced setups. Network, internet, LAN, IPTV, DHCP server, looking for the place where I can port forward, dynamic DNS, static routing, operation mode, here's our wireless settings, our wireless setup. Activate guest network. Add parental controls. Just want to see if I can. Okay, so I can actually block web pages or Facebooks. Add a new network. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. I got friends that. Uh, I got friends that are trying to uh, block their children from Facebook. I'm going to have to tell them about this. Quality of service. Make sure that you put the correct information in here. Um, actually, let's hit save and see what happens. Nothing. Firewall. Access control. You can put it at blacklist down there. That's interesting. IP and MAC binding. Not forwarding. This is probably where I want uh, to change things for the port forwarding. IPv6. I'm going to start messing with that soon. And here's your VPN, your open VPN, your PPTP, your VPN connection, smart life assistant. Yes, this can connect to Alexa. And then just uh, various system tools. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for me. Ultimately, in the end, I would definitely recommend this router. If this seems to be within your price range or it's uh, available to you and it's time to upgrade, check her out. $149.99 Canadian rupees. That's it for me, folks. Never from those tech bits. Link in the description if you want to pick this up off Amazon. Like and subscribe if you like this stuff. It's always appreciated. And as always, folks, take care of each other.